My fiance's mother, she hates me. And it's pretty obvious. I mean, she won't take me on family vacations, but she takes everyone else's significant other. Well, when I decide to confront her about this, guess who gets her back? That's right, my fiancé, so here we are in our biggest argument yet. I know the title sounds terrible, but hey, hear me out. Please. My fiancé and I have been dating for over a couple years and recently got engaged. He proposed, which I was happy about, and we're both in college, we own a house, cars, and pets together. My parents are well off and gracious. My fiance and I have a great relationship. I'm talking about no fights, no breakups, good understanding, etc. He's my best friend, my absolute rock, and I don't see myself being with anyone else but him. We moved out together earlier this year, so both of our families should know that our relationship is serious. We both plan on getting married in the future, not right now. People think if we got married, we're having kids right away. <laughs> but we don't plan on having kids for a long time. So far, we've only broken the news. Well, aside from our immediate family, just a few friends and a couple of teachers. Everyone's been supportive, but Ben's mother, instead of being supportive, seems to say, Wow, aren't you too young for that? Or, shouldn't you both wait until you get married? Why are you doing it so young? My boyfriend, a fiancé I guess I should say now, is the man I want to spend the rest of my life with and has been the love of my life for the past two years. And I just don't see why people think I need to be a certain age before it just magically gets acceptable to get married. I've been having somewhat of a strange relationship with Ben's mom from the start. One thing I found out about early on was that we come from a pretty different background. You see, I'm an Emirati, whereas Ben's from the States. I come from a very, very large family. I have eight siblings, cousins who live all over the world, and none of my aunts or uncles live in the same state that I do. Carol assumes because my family is the way we are that I'll settle into some sort of same lifestyle. Uh, a quick rundown of rude and passive-aggressive things she's done or said. One of the biggest lies she's told is that I supposedly told her privately that my fiancé is actually gay and is using me as a cover. She told everyone she could that I said this. His friends, their aunts, uncles, and their parents. This happened in the first two months of us dating, so it caused a gigantically huge misunderstanding and as you could guess, he was quite upset, but my fiancé quickly realized the pattern of her being dishonest and no longer believes anything she says about me. Whenever she's on the phone with someone and our dog goes up to greet her, she usually says something along the lines of, Oh, Nana's baby coming to say hi, which isn't the bad part. She then follows it up with, Yeah, this is my only chance of having grandkids for a while since they don't plan on having children. Once she realized she could not get to my fiancé, she switched sides, started talking badly about him to me, trying to turn me against him and convince me that he was a bad person. It did not work and that frustrated her and directed her anger back at me. Anytime we're together, she asked these nosy questions. I was at her house with her for dinner. Out of nowhere, she starts asking how much money I make per hour and how much I work. I felt uncomfortable considering I'm a student who can only work for about 20 hours a week at minimum wage right now. I felt embarrassed and didn't know how to answer it, to be honest with you. She asked off about how much money my parents make, what my dad does for a living, how much he makes, or just ask questions about my past relationships. I was in one other relationship that was abusive and does not like talking about. And relationships with family, well, she doesn't talk about anything to me unless it's asking about money. My life, or my family. There's one regular conversation like, oh, hey, how was work today? Instead, no. It'll be stuff like, oh, hey, how long did you work today? What hours did you work? How much did you make? Why do you care? Several times I've tried to make peace with her. 
I've apologized for causing her worry and requested her not to treat me poorly because what ifs. But she would say stuff like, You would not understand why I'm doing this because you're not a mother. All mothers have to agree with what I'm doing. She even refuses to help with anything wedding related because he did not ask for their blessing. When in fact I was the one that decided he should not ask because I know he would tell them off if they said no. And I was pretty sure they would have said no to him. Ben is super close with his family. They always plan a lot of trips and adventures, and I'd say they usually have about two trips a year. When not taking trips, they still find lots of fun things to do close by. It's a pretty big family. He has two sisters. Both are a few years younger than him and are not married yet. Whenever we were dating, I was never invited on his family trips. His family could be pretty strict about things, so I figured it's just because of that. So I didn't have to do much of a big deal with it, and didn't say anything. I was hurt, but I didn't want to cause a big old scene. Over the months since then, they've gone to do several things in town together and never really invited me. Sometimes they'll go grab dinner, or go shopping, or simple things like that, and I get left at home. Well, they're planning another family vacation in December over Christmas, a holiday that Ben wants to spend with me and his family. This time, we were engaged. Have been for just four days, so I figured that I would be invited, but no. Ben said that it sounds like I won't be able to do it this year either. I finally broke down asked him why I never get invited to family stuff, and he just told me that Carol is a very stubborn woman. That's his mom, and she thinks it's only for direct family. When he asked if he could bring his fiancée along, his mother made a face and said something along the lines of, That would be kind of weird. This is a family trip. Ben told me that it was kind of hurtful to hear her say that because he sees me as part of the family because we plan on staying together forever. My husband supports me 100%, but apparently, he got chewed out by mother-in-law. I'm the kind of person who likes to deal with things head-on. No petty bullcrap, so I call Carol to confront her. I told her that I did not think it was fair that I never get invited. She at first says it's not personal, that she wanted to plan a bunch of activities over the week in Cali and knew I was not the one for long-planned itineraries. Well, I said that's crap because I could come and still hang out with them at the beach and hotel while going to the other planned stuff if I choose. When I made it clear that I didn't buy it, she acted like the crazy one and told me, we get to go on vacation by ourselves, so I don't know why it's such a big deal. She also said, well, we're not going to pay for a flight and hotel for you either. Choose to stand up to everyone. <laughs> Things got heated really quickly and she ended up telling me that she, well, Ben liked alone time with his family. And that it made him feel like a kid again, which, by the way, is not true. She said that I'm not legally family since we're not yet married. And plus, she just likes it being blood family at times. We ended up fighting and I hung up. I'm saying it just would have been nice. It just would have been nice. For her to extend the invite as other family members have always included significant others on the vacation. She was adamant about just spending the vacation with her quote family. So, no significant others were invited. I told her that she was being selfish, but she thinks it's her money and her family. So, I text both my future sister-in-laws, telling them I'm completely disgusted. They all would leave me out of this just because mother-in-law has a petty grudge against me and can't stop being a control freak for five seconds. Well, the next morning... I wake up to text after text after text telling me to grow up and that she was only one that did not want me there. Well, this is a very fancy and exotic trip that's paid for almost entirely by Carol. She planned the entire trip. Includes hotels and activities. I mean, she's well off enough to sponsor fancy vacations as she got all the money from the divorce. She and her ex had a vicious divorce. And well, 
he cheated the entire marriage. She cheated one time, and he went on a nasty smear campaign, mental abuse, etc. He berated her to the point tears in front of the judge and called her illiterate. The judge did not like that at all, and well, he's paying out his butt an insane amount of alimony. For clarification, I told her I was going to be paying for my own flight. My train fares, hotel expenses, you name it. I've not apologized as I feel like she's in the wrong. She won't talk to me because she thinks that I was wrong. I feel like doing family trips and excluding non-blood family is a bit too much. Now, my own family loves him. They're almost the complete opposite of his. My dad enjoys when he sleeps over here, and he's nothing but respectful. Even bringing food and treats, and it's very clear he wants nothing but to get along with the family. They're very open and inviting of anybody that comes into their home. They basically make any guests feel welcomed in there, and my mom even personally let him know that he's welcomed into their home anytime. He doesn't even need to give them a heads up before coming over. My boyfriend's met every single one of my 25 cousins. He's met my grandparents, all of my aunts and uncles. He's been to a few family weddings even. He's been on my yearly family vacation every single year since we started dating. And he's been to five family reunions. But... Ben's family was never really inviting whenever I came by. Like, for instance, Carol would provide some leftover food and drinks when I come over, and she'll just stay in her room to avoid any interaction with me. Also, Ben always needed to ask for her permission to let me come over. Sometimes she would come up with excuses as to why I can't come over, and this is pretty much why Ben moved on, but anyways... He asked them if they did not like his partner, but they always insisted that it's not like that. They're just uncomfortable with having me at the house. After being insulted over and over, one day she let me come over, but I did not like it, so I never really did. It led to our first ever tension in the relationship because they planted seeds of doubt in Ben's head. It happened when you're told weekly that something is a certain way, right? Last month, I popped the wedding topic to Ben. We were ecstatic and we started planning immediately. We fixed the date to be mid-October on our dating anniversary. And then we talked about Carol. He said he knows there will never be a close relationship again, but he just can't imagine not having her there. I gently asked what the point of having her here was if she's not even acknowledging us. He said he gets it, but she is his mother and he just wants to leave the door open and include her in the biggest day of his life. He said, If I really didn't want her there, he would not invite her. I thought he wanted me to be honest and said that I really didn't want her there. Well, that upset him <laughs> and he clearly does want her there. So, I asked some opinions and my mom and bridesmaids all agree that she should not be there. She hasn't earned it and seeing her will cause me stress. I don't know if I'm being an a-hole because she is his mom, not mine. And well, I'm not letting him make the decision. But I don't want to take the very huge risk of ruining our wedding day for the basic zero chance that his mom one day... Maybe we'll become half-decent? That doesn't exactly bode well for the marriage because how many other big life events are expected to sacrifice for the sake of keeping a woman who hates me and her life? I asked Ben to reach out to her and mention the wedding. Not an invite, but say to her that with the wedding coming up, they could meet up and talk. Ben tried to have a similar conversation with and she just blankly stared. She would not speak and I told him that I'll let him make the decision and let him know that I will support any decision he makes. Honestly, the way her messed up brain works, she might have more respect for him if she quote, shows some backbone, huh? Just a little bit. And didn't invite her. Inviting her will go one of two ways and this is what I truly think. Number one, 
She's going to refuse to attend, which only will make Ben feel worse that his own mother doesn't want to be a part of his big day. Number two. She'll show up and be the ominous, dark cloud looming amongst everybody and everything at our happy occasion, and will probably say some nasty stuff once the alcohol starts flowing. Finally, Ben accepted that his mother is stubbornly being difficult and would almost certainly ruin the atmosphere at the wedding if she came. I told him we might just send her an announcement. Huh? Then she'll know when the wedding is. It puts the ball in her court. Will she be willing to ask for an invitation? But Ben told that it won't work because she's waiting to divorce Ben's father. Because she didn't want him to think the cheating hurt her feelings. She never asked about me or the wedding, so we didn't know how to quote not invite her. If we told her directly she's not invited, she's totally going to go nuclear. I'm not a fan of this idea. Now, Carol was looking at a dress Ben was seeing on his phone, and he gets a text message from one of our friends, saying that she cannot attend the mother of the bride function as she has an entrance exam on the date fixed. Carol's been irate since then, as we kept her in the dark while we already fixed the date for the function and the wedding. She's been demanding a thorough explanation and threatening to show up unannounced, you know. A few of Ben's aunts and uncles contacted Ben the next day, telling him that he should invite Carol, that he would not even notice her there, and that it was the right thing to do. He gets mad and just answered it was an event, and he would rather not spend money on guests who didn't want to be there, and he wants to spend it on guests who loved and supported him and his fiance. Now, Carol starts flipping out. Making comments like Ben is making the worst decision of his life, she begins making more swear comments on me, saying that I'm worse than the poor person who can't afford even a simple courthouse wedding. So, when this argument happened, I went into full protective mode for my husband and I, honestly. Ah, I just didn't want her around me or my family. I don't trust her one bit. Not now. So, I remain calm. And I tell her that since my dad's paying for the entire wedding plans, I never told her until now that my father's a millionaire. I have all the rights on earth to choose who should attend the events. And that the wedding was only to be attended by true family, not those who control their own son in the name of being his blood relative. Sometimes we have this false sense often drilled into us that being related by blood. Something you have no control over whatsoever actually is more important than family you choose. But people need to accept, blood is not more thick than water. I very politely informed her that I should not hear one more word about her wanting to join a wedding she was never even wished to happen in the first place. Carol was shocked after hearing all this. Bindon told Carol that he would be inviting his father to all the pre-wedding events, and the wedding as well, which, by the way, he's bluffing to her. So, if she could not join the event, he would understand. Well, she then marched to the other room, being comforted by Ben's sisters, who are now calling me cruel and selfish. So guys, I came here to ask you, what would you have done? And am I the a-hole for telling her she's not coming? All right, so in my opinion for this story, I would say, OP, no, you're not the a-hole. And in fact, Carol was a bit overbearing, huh? And, well, OP asked at the end, do what I did, was it a bit too petty? No. One of the commenters in specifics said this exact thing. Hey, OP, I went through the exact same situation with my mother-in-law. Sometimes, it's better if you just... Cut off somebody toxic like this from your life. And well, if your fiancé Ben relationship doesn't last, then so be it. Because you don't want to live like this. Take it from somebody who's been there. Anyways, best of luck. So guys, with that comment, let me know exactly what you thought about the story. And if you had any advice you could give to OP about what the heck to do about this. Guys, if there's any more updates on this video, you will be the first to hear about it. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming updates. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next one.